Azure Virtual WAN is like a magic wand that simplifies, automates your connectivity, security, and routing in the cloud in just a few clicks. Here in the Azure portal, you want to start by creating a new resource, then type Virtual WAN. And like all resources, you need to first select your subscription, resource group, and region, and then give it a name, and then we need a type. Now there are two types here, basic and standard. But I'm going to suggest that you only use standard as it has more features and functionality, and basic is, well, kind of basic. So if you really want to have fun with VWAN, you want standard. Then click next and click create. Now once it is, over on the left, we've got the connectivity section, and that has your hubs, VPNs for site and user, as well as express route and connections for your virtual networks which all kind of sounds like normal Azure networking constructs. So why would you want to use VWAN when you've already got networks set up? Well, a network can be configured in multiple ways. For example, a mesh would interconnect all of your networks together, which can kind of make a mesh easy to use. But for each new network you add, you exponentially increase the connections, complexity, and routing. And it's even worse if each network has its own firewall because your cost just went through the roof too. Now, another network pattern that's traditional is the hub and spoke, which lets you place all of those management and security controls in the hub, and you can isolate each spoke from each other. But this makes the hub kind of a single point of failure, and it adds a lot of latency for the spokes trying to communicate with each other. VWAN combines the advantages of hub and spoke, giving you centralized management, but with any-to-any -any connectivity like a mesh and your routing becomes super easy because it's all done behind the scenes with the route service, which will make changes and propagate all of the routes to every place that needs it. Now click over here and let's create your first hub. Click new hub at the top, and then you wanna select the region and give it a name and an IP address range. And this should be unique from your other address spaces in your VNets that you're gonna manage. Be sure too that the address space is big enough for all of the nodes that you'll need on your network. Which brings us to the next line, which is the virtual hub capacity. This is the bandwidth and the number of VMs that this hub can manage. And yes, you'll be able to change this later if you need to. But in this example, I'll just pick the lowest capacity, which still gives me support for 2000 VMs. Then you need to tell VWAN how you'll prioritize your routing. And that can be using express route or your VPNs or the AS path, which is gonna allow BGP to select the best route for each destination. Now on the next few tabs are the other resources that you wanna to connect to your hub, like the site-to-site -site VPN, or the point-to-site, which is the user VPN, and your express route. And it's all as easy as just swiping left. And Azure is going to provision a new virtual network gateway for that type of connection. So your scale unit here for the gateway is what you need to pick next. And that's again, based on your bandwidth and throughput. And then you have your routing preferences of either Microsoft or the internet. Now, of course, traffic flows in two directions, but this setting here is more thinking about the egress of that data from Azure. So which one should you pick? But to explain this best, we need some of this. I know it's not a potato, it's potato chips, but this makes sense, okay? Just trust me. Now, when you were a kid, did you ever play hot potato or musical chairs? It's basically where you pass something around and the one left holding it at the end is out. So what does that have to do with Azure and egress traffic? Well, egress begins with the service that you're using, like a virtual machine or Azure storage. And the question is, when do you toss the potato? In the internet method, this is the hot potato side, you go from the Azure service down to the Microsoft point of presence, which is the edge service, as fast as possible. And then you ride the ISP's network or public internet until you get down to your local ISP and then down to your on-prem. Now the Microsoft way of routing is more of a cold potato. That's where you egress from the Azure service, but you stay on the Microsoft global network for as long as possible. And then you exit as close to your local internet provider as possible. Now, since the Microsoft path gives you more time of your data flowing on that private network, you're gonna have some optimizations in speed and latency but the egress cost is going to be higher. On the internet side, you get lower egress costs because you jump out to the internet faster. Now there really is no right or wrong way to go here. It's just what works best for your workload. So for my example, I'll pick the Microsoft side. So we're gonna skip ahead to the express route for a second. 
and here you only need to select your gateway size and then VWAN just takes care of the rest. Point to sight is a bit more complex. Here you need to pick your scale unit just like before, but now you need to configure your client VPN solution. So click right over here, and then you're gonna need to give it a name and a tunnel type, and I'll use OpenVPN. Then choose one of the three different authentications from the Azure Certs or Radius or Azure AD VPN. And at the end, you can also select specific groups that can use this. Now, I've already created an Azure AD VPN in another video, so I'll just use that. And here we need three different items. Now the audience is the VPN's app ID, which if we jump over to Azure Active Directory, then go to Enterprise Apps, find the VPN app, just copy the app ID right over there. Jump back to VWAN and paste it. Now we need to go back to Azure AD and at the overview, then we wanna copy the tenant ID. Jump back over to VWAN, and for the issuer, the URL here should be https colon slash slash sts.windows.net slash, and then drop in your tenant ID, and it must end with another slash. Now the next line, that one should be https colon slash slash login.microsoftonline.com slash, and then you drop in your tenant ID and no additional slash on the end. Perfectly simple. Now click create and you pick your routing preference just like you did before. Then you click over here and add a VPN address pool. And I'll use something simple like 100.0.0.0 slash 24. And you can also add up to five custom DNS servers. And that takes care of the VPN site, user VPN and express route. And depending on which one of those that you picked, this could take quite a while to provision. But by the magic of movies, we're ready to go onto the next step of adding your virtual network connections, which in normal Azure terms is setting up VNet peering. So click at the top and then give your connection a name, select the particular hub you want to associate with, along with the subscription resource group, and then select your VNet from the dropdown. And then in the next line, you select your route, which could be just the default, unless you have something more specific you've already set up and then you enter static routes if you need to. Finally, you can even bypass the next hop IP if you need. Then click create. Now be sure that the virtual networks that you're selecting here for connectivity are not part of the same address space as the hub and all the VNets need to be all unique so normal peering rules apply. So now that the Azure side of all of your connections are complete, what about security? Well, just click on your hub and then click there at the bottom for the Azure Firewall. And notice that your hub here is currently unsecured. So let's click Next. And then you can select the Firewall SKU that you want to use. And again, this is Azure Firewall. And you can choose from Basic, Premium, or Standard. Now, Basic and Premium are gonna require separate Azure Firewall policies to already exist so that you can select them here. So you may have to go back and create one of those before you do this step. Otherwise, you could just use standard, which applies the rules in the firewall itself without separate policies. When you made your choices here, click next. And if you happen to use a firewall other than the Azure firewall, you can select from these vendors if that's your choice. Then click create. I think that's enough for our first video on VWAN. So comment below if you have any questions or feedback about the Azure Virtual WAN and you can click this follow-up video on other Azure networking stuff, and happy learning.